welcome to the fifth lecture on homology theory and today i shall talk about singular homology so let's start with singular n simplex so singular n simplex so a singular n simplex in a topological space x is a map that is continuous function say sigma from an n simplex say delta n to x and it is written as sigma delta n to x note that there is no restriction on such maps that's mean we can write here this map sigma need not to be injective on delta n or delta n interior ok so there is no such restriction so singular n simplex is just a map that is just a continuous function from a n simplex delta n to x so here the domain is not the specific one so we need any n simplex ok and we can identify two n simplex canonically so we will see this later now we define n chain so first of all we define c n x now let c n x be a free abelian group with basis set of singular n simplices in x in simplices in x okay that is c n x is spanned by all singular in simplices in x okay so mostly this basis set is uncountable right so if x is not a singleton set that's mean if x is any space not singleton or any countable set so mostly it is uncountable why see we can write here so note that if x is uncountable as a set then the set of singular 
in simply says in x should be uncountable. Why? Because suppose x is uncountable as a set that is mean x has uncountably many points. Now, choose a point A from x, then you can always define a map sigma from delta n to A that is mean the whole simplex delta n goes to the singleton point A. Now, this is a continuous function right. So, this is a singular n simplex in x. Now, since x has uncountably many points, so you will have uncountably many maps right. So, you have uncountably many n singular n simplices. Therefore, the basis set in C n x should be uncountable fine. Now, the elements in C n x are called n chains or specifically singular n chain. Now, what will be the element of C n x? So, any element say sigma belongs to C n x can be written as a finite sum as a finite sum say summation i equal to 1 to sum m where it is in i sigma i where this n i belongs to z that is the so n i is an integer and each sigma i is a singular n simplex in x ok. So, why we have this finite sum because we know that C n x is a free abelian group and any elements of the free abelian group can be written as finite sum of the basis right ok. Now, let sigma be a singular in simplex in x ok. So, that is sigma is a map from an in simplex say if I want to specify the vertex set say this is v 0, v 1 up to v n ok. So, sigma is a map from this simplex to x right. Now, we can define the boundary of this singular n simplex. So, then the boundary say boundary map say del n is defined by so del n sigma equal to summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 whole to the power i sigma restricted over 
v0 vi cap vn right so what we mean by vi cap so by vi cap we mean that that vertex vi is missing that's mean this is same as summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 i sigma restricted over v 0 up to v i minus 1 then v i plus 1 that is v i is missed and up to v n ok well now here you have to note that by a canonical identification we can assume that sigma restricted over v0 vi cap up to vn as a map from del n minus 1 to x that is whenever we talk about singular n simplices then the map sigma will depend on the image only not on the domain that's mean if you have a map say sigma from some v0 v1 up to vn to x okay then we can call this as a singular n simplex that's mean it is a map from delta n to x so we will always canonically identify the simplex say v0 v1 up to vn to any arbitrary simplex delta n ok now note that here so in that sense we can say that so therefore that sigma restricted over v0 up to v i cap that v n this one ok now the domain set is v 0 v 1 v 2 up to v i minus 1 comma v i plus 1 up to v n right now the domain can be treated as delta n ok delta n minus 1 therefore this is a singular n minus 1 simplex simplex in x ok now that imply sigma restricted over this ok this is an element of c n minus 1 x for all i fine so that's mean del n sigma belongs to c n minus 1 x that is if we choose any basis element say sigma from c n x then del n sigma should be an element of c n minus 1 x therefore we can say if sigma belongs to c n x then sigma equal to summation i equal to 1 to say some number m in i sigma i right that imply del n sigma will be summation of i equal to 1 to m n i del n sigma i right now each sigma i is a basis element of c n x right and we know that del n 
sigma i is also in c n minus 1 x therefore this element will be c n minus 1 x so therefore we have a boundary map del n from c n x to c n minus 1 x defined by you can just write delta n sigma equal to summation i equal to 0 to n sigma so minus 1 power i sigma restricted over v 0 v i cap v n. Now, this is true for every n right therefore, we have a singular chain complex. So, we can write here. So, thus we have a singular chain complex. So, this one. So, we will have something then C n x to C n minus 1 x to C n minus 2 x it is going up to C 1 x then C 0 x to finally it is 0. Now, this is my del n this is my del n minus 1. So, this is my del 1 and this is my del 0 and equivalent we have already seen that this is you can write 0. Okay. Now, by the similar proof as in lecture 3 of this homology theory, we can prove that this lemma. So, del n del n plus 1 this is equivalent to 0 for all n bigger equal to 0 and the proof of this similar to the proof which I prove in lecture 3 of homology theory. Okay? Now, note that when we talk about the simplicial homology group then instead of this C n x we have defined delta n x. Okay? Now, in that case if x has a delta complex structure and if that delta complex structure is finite that is you can say finite dimensional then we have seen that delta n x is 0 after some stage. right? Suppose, for example, when x is R p 2 or torus or any two dimensional surface, then we have seen that delta n x is 0 for n bigger equal to 3. And when we have some three dimensional topological space say R p 3 or something like that, then we have seen that delta n x is 0 when n bigger equal to 4. But here in the singular homology case that C n x will never be 0 if x is non empty. That is mean even if x is a singleton set then also C n x is not equal to 0 for all n because the basis element of C n x is just a map from delta n to x. We do not required any injectivity right that is mean you can define. So, if x is non empty set okay, that is mean if x has at least one point then you can always define a map from delta n to a to that singleton point right. Therefore, 
the cnx is always non empty and if x has uncountably many points even most of the topological space is uncountable that is as a set right then cnx is uncountable so you have to note that okay now focus on this lemma so here we have proved that actually we, we earlier we proved that so delta n delta n plus 1 their composition is equal to 0 now this will imply that image of del n plus 1 is a normal subgroup of kernel of del n ok so we have seen this in the simplicial homology cases as well ok so i will i will prove here again so first of all we claim image of del n plus 1 is subset of kernel of del n ok why so first of all let say tau belongs to image of del n plus 1 now that imply tau equal to sum del n plus 1 sigma for some sigma belongs to c n plus 1 x ok now what is my del n tau now del n tau will be del n del n plus 1 sigma now which is same as del n composition del n plus 1 then sigma but we know that this map is 0 that is the composition of these two map is 0 we have proved that earlier right now this is 0 now since del n tau equal to 0 that imply tau belongs to kernel of del n ok so that is image of del n plus 1 is subset of kernel of del n now you can easily check that both are groups right and you can check that they are so this is actually a subgroup of this and also both of them are abelian group right now since they are abelian so this should be a normal subgroup now you can check that since image of del n plus 1 and kernel of del n both are subgroup of the abelian group the abelian is important here c n x ok that is image of del n plus 1 is a normal subgroup of kernel of del n. So, since this is abelian, so any group, any subgroup is a normal subgroup, right. Now, since image of del n plus 1 is a normal subgroup of kernel of del n so their quotient is well defined so thus we can say the quotient group kernel of del n quotient with image of del n plus 1 is well defined right and this group this quotient group
kernel of del n quotient of image of del n plus 1 is called the nth singular homology group of x and is denoted by h and x. Now, there is an interesting fact. If x is a non-trivial topological space, that is if x is uncountable as a set, then we have seen that for all n c n x is non empty and c n x is generated by uncountably many elements. That is the basis set of c n x is uncountable, but the interesting fact is that when you do the quotient that is h n x is mostly generated by finitely number of elements and it is same as the h n delta x. That is mean the singular homology of x is same as the simplicial homology of f x. That is mean if x is say circle one dimensional circle then for all n c n x is generated by uncountably many elements, but c uh, h 1 x is generated by a single element and it is isomorphic to z and for any n more than 2 or more than or equal to 2 you can say it is just 0 that is mean generated by 0 element only. Now, the key difference between the simplicial homology and the singular homology is the following that you can compute the singular homology for any topological space. Okay. But to compute the simplicial homology, you must need a delta complex structure on the topological space X. So, we must need a delta complex structure on the topological space X. Okay. So, this is the advantage for singular homology and this is the disadvantage for simplicial homology. But if you want to compute the both homology groups for a topological space, then the simplicial homology group it is easy to compute. So, it is easy to compute because you can see the delta n x right. So, it is mostly generated by finitely many elements, okay. but for singular homology it is a disadvantage that c n x is mostly generated by uncountably many elements. So, it is very difficult to compute. So, difficult to compute. So, here we have disadvantage for singular homology, but we have advantage for simplicial homology, but later I shall prove that so, if both homology group exist that is if x has a delta complex structure then simplicial homology and singular homology both are same. So, mainly in this homology theory simplicial homology is used for computational purpose and singular homology is used for theoretical purpose. Okay. Now, from now onward So, sometimes, so we write delta 
instead of delta n okay so that's mean so in this sense delta n delta n plus 1 that is identically 0 right so this can be expressed as just del square equal to 0 right because this is my so we shall use this is delta and this is as delta so delta square equal to 0 ok fine so now I shall prove one interesting result here it is so write as a theorem so corresponding to the decomposition of the topological space x into its path connected components so x alpha so we write this so corresponding to the decomposition of a space x into its path connected components x alpha so there is a isomorphism between h in x and the direction alpha h in x alpha that is mean if x is not path connected and it has several path connected components say each x alpha is a path connected components of x that is mean x is disjoint union of x alpha and each x alpha is a path connected component of x you may have infinitely number of path connected components ok now then h and x that is nth homology or you can say singular homology of x is isomorphic to the direct sum of h and x alpha that is mean if you compute the nth homology group of x alpha and if you take the direct sum then that direct sum is isomorphic to the nth homology group of x so we shall prove this so here is the proof So, here x equal to disjoint union of x alpha where each x alpha is a path connected component of x. Okay. Now let sigma be a map from del n to x ok and what is x? x is my that disjoint union of x alpha right. Now that will imply sigma will be a map from del n to some x alpha which is subset of x. Why sigma going to x alpha because sigma is a continuous function right and delta n is path connected. Now, since sigma is continuous and delta n is path connected, so the sigma of delta n 
that is the image of delta n by sigma must be path connected so it should be in some x alpha okay that is you can say that if sigma is a n singular or you can say singular n simplex right singular n simplex in x then sigma must be a singular n simplex in x alpha for some alpha right now there is a doubt so i have faced this problem by several students they always feel that the n chain that is summation of sigma i so summation of n i sigma i is also a singular n simplex but that is not true because whenever you are taking that summation of say sigma i so this is not a map from delta n to x right because in x we are not defining the summation that's mean sigma if sigma 1 is a map from delta 1 to x and sigma 2 is a map from delta n to x then that sigma 1 plus sigma 2 is not a map from del n to x so sigma 1 is a singular n simplex and sigma 2 is a singular n simplex that does not mean that sigma 1 plus sigma 2 is also a singular n simplex okay but here we know that if sigma 1 and sigma 2 both are singular n simplex in x then sigma 1 plus sigma 2 is in cnx right that is an n chain now if sigma is a n chain that is in c n x then we know that sigma can be written as a finite sum say i equal to 1 to m n i sigma i where n i belongs to z and sigma i is singular n simplex more specifically singular n simplex in x right but we have already seen that singular n simplex in x must be a singular n chain in x alpha for some alpha right so but we know a singular n simplex in x must be a singular n simplex in x alpha for some alpha right there therefore we can write that sigma as a some summation okay of say sigma some tilde say j where sigma the tilde j is n in or you can write singular singular in chain in x alpha ok or you can write here it is as alpha 
right so that imply we can say that sigma belongs to this one that is direct sum of c n x alpha ok that means any element of c n x can be written as a direct sum of c n x alpha on the other hand we know that c n x alpha is just a subset of c n x right now that imply if you take the direct sum of c n x alpha this is also you can say it is a subgroup of c n x so that is c n x is same as direct sum of c n x alpha ok fine now if sigma belongs to say c n x alpha then by the definition of the boundary you can easily check that del n sigma this is also a an element of c n minus 1 x alpha right ok. So, therefore, we have a singular n chain for each x alpha. So, thus for each alpha we have a singular n or say singular chain complex this one. So, c n x alpha going to c n minus 1 x alpha c n minus 2 x alpha and it is going up to c 0 x to 0. So, this is my delta 0, this is my delta n minus 1, this is my delta n. Okay. Now, more specifically, since this delta n is just a restriction right over the subspace c n x alpha. So, we can write here it is delta n alpha. Thus, we can write delta n as a direct sum of del n alpha which is a map from c n x to c n minus 1 x and this is my direct sum of c n x alpha and this is direct sum of c n minus 1 x alpha ok and where each del n alpha is a map from c n x alpha to c n x sorry c n minus 1 x alpha. In other words we can say that since c n x splits over the direct sum so, we can split the boundary function as well. Okay. Now, in this sense, we can say that kernel of del n is direct sum of kernel of del n alpha and image of del n plus 1 is same as direct sum of image of del n plus 1 alpha ok. Now, what is my h n x? Thus, h n x 
x which is by definition kernel of del n quotient with image of del n plus 1 ok. Now, this is same as direction of kernel del n alpha quotient with direction of image of del n plus 1 alpha. Now, if we take to say alpha and alpha dash they are different ok. Then kernel of del n alpha has no element common with image of del n plus 1 alpha dash because this is subset of kernel of del n alpha dash and we know that kernel of del n alpha and kernel of del n alpha dash are different. So, whenever we have two different alpha that is alpha and alpha dash then there is no relation between kernel of del n alpha and image of del n plus 1 alpha dash. Therefore, this is isomorphic to the direction alpha kernel of del n alpha quotient with image of del n plus 1 alpha and by definition this is my h n x alpha. So, this is same as we have direction here and h n x alpha ok. So, therefore, if x has many path connected components ok it can be arbitrary it can be infinite ok. So, if x has many path connected components then the h n x that is nth singular homology group of x is same as the direct sum of n singular homology group of the path connected components fine. So, we are done. Now, I am going to explain this one again if it is not clear to you ok. So, why kernel of del n is direct sum of kernel of del n alpha. So, first of all let sigma be a singular n chain in x ok which is direction alpha c n x alpha. So, that is mean sigma can be written as summation obviously, we have a finite sum here say alpha say i equal to 1 to m say sigma alpha i ok where each of sigma alpha i belongs to some c n x alpha i ok. So, each of sigma alpha i is a singular n chain of x alpha i ok. Now, if sigma is in kernel of del n that imply del n sigma that is 0. Now, that will imply del n or you can write summation of i equal to 1 to m del n sigma alpha i that is 0 right, but for different i and j there is no relation between del n alpha i and del n alpha j. So, that will imply del n sigma alpha i that is 0 for all i ok for all i equal to you can say 1 to up to m. Now, that imply sigma 
alpha i belongs to here you can write alpha i kernel of del n alpha i ok. So, that imply you can write sigma belongs to that summation kernel of del n alpha i ok. So, you can write this one as well. So, now this will imply actually kernel of del n is same as so direct sum of kernel of del n alpha ok. Now, we shall compute the singular homology groups of a topological space which is just a point. So, we can write here problem. So, find the singular homology groups of the topological space x which is just singleton say x. So, first we prove that for each n we have unique singular n simplex. Why? Because so let sigma be a map from delta n that is the n simplex from x which is just singleton ok be a map. Now, that imply sigma must be a constant map right. Therefore, C n x is spanned by sigma n where sigma n is a constant map. Okay. So, we can write C n x equal to span of sigma n and this is isomorphic to z. Okay. So, note that if x if the topological space x is not singleton then it might not happen. That is mean for an example we can take so, suppose my x is closed interval 0 1. Okay. Now, in that case we may have two different map from one, one simplex to the topological space x whose domain and codomain both are same, but the maps are different it may happen. For an example say sigma say closed interval 0 1 which is you can write as delta 1 to closed interval 0 1 and this is my x such that sigma x equal to x that is the identity function and we can write again another we can choose another map tau from closed interval 0 1 to closed interval 0 1. So, this is my delta 1 and this is my x such that say tau x equal to x square right. So, sigma and tau here sigma and tau both are
singular here one chain sorry one simplex okay but sigma not equal to tau though they have same image and same domain okay okay come to the back main problem so here my topological space is singleton set so c n x is isomorphic to z and which is spanned by sigma n which is a constant map so we have a chain complex so thus we have a chain complex C n x to C n minus 1 x to C n minus 2 x in this way it is going C 1 x C 0 x to 0 and this is my delta n delta n minus 1 this is my delta 1 and this is my delta 0 which is actually a 0 map fine and this is span y sigma n which is isomorphic to z ok now we have c n minus 1 which is span y sigma n minus 1 which is just a constant map right this is again isomorphic to z so this is span by sigma n minus 2 again this is isomorphic to z similarly this is span by sigma 1 this is span by sigma 0 and this is also isomorphic to z this is also isomorphic to z fine now what will be my del n sigma n now what will be my del n sigma n now that is by the definition summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 whole to the power i sigma n restricted over v0 vi cap which is missing and vn fine now note that for each i this sigma n restricted over v0 vi cap vn so this is a map from some n minus 1 simplex to x right but x is singleton therefore this must be a constant map right so this must be a constant map and hence is same as sigma n minus 1 right so that imply del n sigma n that is summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 whole to the power i sigma n minus 1 ok so here we have n plus 1 number of terms so it involves n sorry n plus 1 number of terms right therefore 
so if n is odd then del n sigma n will have even number of terms and all the terms are sigma n minus 1 right and we have positive and negative sign alternately since we have even number of terms with positive and negative sign so there they will be cancel out so this will be 0 now if n is even then del n sigma n will have odd number of terms with positive and negative sign so all terms will be cancel out except one so we will have sigma n minus 1 maybe the first term okay that's mean if n is odd then del n will be the zero map and if n is even then generator goes to generator so it will be a isomorphism that imply del 2n minus 1 is identically 0 and del 2n c 2n x 2 c 2n minus 1 x is an isomorphism ok so for n bigger equal to 1 so therefore so if n is odd or we can write h 2 n x that is kernel of del 2 n quotient with image of del 2 n plus 1 ok now what is my del 2 n so del 2 n is a isomorphism therefore its kernel is 0 so this is my 0 quotient with image of del 2 n plus 1 and this is also a 0 map so it is 0 quotient with 0 so this is just 0 now what will be my h of 2 n minus 1 x now that will be kernel of del 2 n minus 1 quotient with image of del 2 n ok now what is the kernel of del 2 n <coughs> minus 1 now del of 2 n minus 1 we know that this is a 0 map right so, since this is a 0 map so the whole space c 2n minus 1 that will be the kernel ok and what will be the image of del 2n now we know that del 2n is isomorphism right so image will be the whole space so that will be again c 2n minus 1 x so again this is 0 ok so this is for n bigger equal to 1 this is also for n bigger equal to 1 now that imply we can write h n x equal to 0 if n bigger equal to 1 ok now what will be my h 0 now h 0 x is kernel of del 0 quotient with image of del 1 now now we know that delta 0 is a 0 map therefore it is c 0 x 
which is isomorphic to z quotient with image of del 1 but we know that del 1 is a zero map so this is just a c0 x right as del 1 is zero map and this is isomorphic to z ok so if x is a singleton point then its zeroth homology group is z and all the nth homology group if n is bigger or equal to 1 is 0 ok so this was the one standard example so we stop today in the next lecture i shall continue from this ok see you in the next lecture